people. I miss you guys. It's been a while since we talked. But uh, in this scenario here, what we're going to talk about is point-to-point -point microwave. And it's somewhat of a really advanced subject for people who have deep pockets, a big group, an organization, or something more uh, organized than just a family unit. Though I think there are some family units that have something like this, but I don't know. I think I've, I could only think of one guy, but uh, I won't mention his name. Me, none, I'm nowhere near this or in the league of this type of uh, equipment here. But this stems from a question I had from uh, one of my viewers about this particular subject here. And normally something off the wall like this I won't even attempt because I don't know much about it or I don't have the equipment to show. But coincidentally... Uh, when he did mention this, I was in the middle of a project of installing something like this in present time commercial gear. But uh, what you see here in front of you is something uh, back in the uh, 90s, mid 90s, during Gulf War One. This vehicle here is a representation of the AN Mark 135 Alpha. And what that was was a... Uh, point-to-point -point microwave system for the military you see you have a mark 135 here a vehicle and the vehicle is that one function is that point-to-point -point microwave dish mobile and on the other end I forgot the, I don't know the range of this particular equipment but it was let's say four miles that's that's pretty uh, reasonable what that will do is you'll have one in one command post and one forward uh, observation post and this one microwave line you have a dish here pointing to the other vehicle a dish here and on this microwave frequencies 2 megahertz to up to 8 uh, 2 gigahertz up to 8 gigahertz I don't know the exact uh, frequency but this is what the span of it it is today you could have multiple telephone lines and radio remote control lines uh, let's say 24 audio lines together transmit from this vehicle in one shot over to the other vehicle and spread right back out to the 24 other individual audio lines on the other end and those audio lines you could have a mixture of like I said phones uh, fax lines uh, radio remote control whatever your imagination could could come up with and that's exactly how they did it back then they linked up command post from you know uh, the the command post all over to forward observer points or some other post somewhere else or back to the main unit uh, through a series of these vehicles or and some other equipment but though in the Marine Corps this is what we had and this is what I've seen I'm going a little bit into like I wouldn't say the history but other application that I seen this in just so I could you know maybe include everybody else who's watching this video like I said this is, was a uh, response to this one individual person but of course when something like this happens and I could get it on film and show you guys I like to include everybody else whether you're interested or not but anyway so this is what it was back in the day now, this is what it is currently. So now I'm alone. Now I can think for myself. About little deals and issues. Things that I just don't understand. So that right there is the LPU lightning protection unit it's like a surge protector and you have your PI, PIDU here Power distribution interface. and this is what takes the signal from your dish out there and converts it into uh, IP and hooks up to your LAN Ethernet system so here's the other end, there's the dish right there, 
pointing towards in between the telephone pole and the TV antenna. There's a hilltop there. I don't know if you can make it out. Here's a LPU unit again for outside. Big old surge protector for lightning. Actually residual electricity from lightning strikes. If it takes a direct hit, it's, it's toast anyway. So it's uh, super grounded. The dish is grounded to this. This is grounded to the pipe. Then again, we have another grounding strap here to the pipe itself, which is grounded in the earth, buried. Here's the cable from the shelter, right down there. And we're going to fire it up and uh, align it here pretty soon. So these two point-to-point -point dishes are pretty much plug and play. Not much to it at all if you have all the parts. And you can, if you can hear, it's armed, meaning you have sort of like an aiming tone. So on the other end, it's already aimed up here. You got another mirror image, a uh, slave on the other end. This is the master site up here. We got two different sites. Uh, this one is going somewhere that way, and that other one is going somewhere that way. Don't, I'll annotate the distances. But uh, anybody could do this with out any test equipment practically. All you need is a laptop to talk to this and the software which comes with it and that's it. So when you're aiming this I can't do it right now but I can simulate it with my hand. If I go to left you hear the tone pitch differently. Go right same thing. If you go up you gotta get the high pitch tone And there you have it. It's aligned. So once it's happy, if you don't do anything, it'll disarm itself in 24 hours. Or you could manually take it off this particular calibration mode. That beeping is this one. It's not seeing its slave out there in the field because it's, it's not activated. So it, it's a warning beep of, of some sort. Troubleshooting beep. So here before I wrap it up, this is the grounding of the shield of this is like Cat 5 cable. And it's uh, it's got a copper sort of shielding on the outside. And here's the ground wire that I'm supposed to attach to the uh, tower or the system grounding system. In this case, it's just going to be grounded to the tower. And the tower is grounded to earth ground. So uh, lightning, of course, is going to fry everything. So who am I kidding? But this is for like residual sort of uh, electricity from a lightning strike from a distance. Uh, we might get a strike, let's say, 100 yards away. but you'll have that parasitic sort of electricity in its surrounding area of the strike you know energizing everything in this location here so this is just to uh, direct all that unwanted electricity to ground so the equipment is protected uh, it will also reduce uh, sight noise so this is all you know IP computer you know data lines going back and forth back and forth and that tend to create some interference sometimes if you're not properly grounded so this will sort of reduce that quite a bit uh, so it won't interfere with other radio systems in this particular site here and there's a lot of shit going on in this site here so that's what it looks like before I put tape them goop and tape over it to weatherproof it So here's a uh, modern day application of this particular concept. Here you have a, one of those little, little mini dish. Uh, it's a Motorola, Motorola point to point microwave dish that's uh, unlicensed frequencies. So it's kind of like the FRS or GMRS of, no actually FRS of microwave dishes. 
so here you have this location called Derry. This is all true. That's the the uh, the, the footage that you've seen so far. Uh, one site is called Derry, and it's seven miles away from this hilltop here that's acting as a hub. So you have seven miles here, another one down here at five miles, another one here at eight miles, and then the headquarters here at three miles. So all these little sites there is one particular dish, and inside the hut is a earthquake seismic sensors. So if there's any rumbling in the ground, it'll show up uh, show up on the uh, equipment, and is digitized, and you have the uh, encoder and decoder here in the box. Sends it out the dish up to the mountain, and that is reported down to headquarters via DSL line, all over the air. So this one is four gigs, four point six gigs, four point six three gigs. 4.62 gigs, 4.635 gigs. Those are just numbers I've thrown up in the air. But they're close to it, and these frequencies are not licensed, so these people here could actually set this up like now and uh, be operational without having to go through a lot of red tape. It's encrypted, so nobody could tune into this and uh, gather your information for their own good or whatever or their own use rather and uh, yeah that's what it is and uh, here you have the hilltop here it's about 2,000 feet high and uh, it's acting as a hub for all these other units because you see this this spot right here cannot see this spot and so forth but they only need to communicate with the hill here and they have a master uh, dish that would point down to headquarters and give all the data of all these locations to that one location to to headquarters same concept and this is pretty much the basics of this it's highly underutilized because you could cram a whole lot of crap on this uh, line here it's, it's two-way communications but but digitally uh, IP configurations so it's an internet protocol to to do whatever and you know over IP you could practically do anything uh, especially if you're a network engineer so my hand on this was just installation verifying that the two units talk to each other and it could talk to the switch and back and forth and from the main switch here I could have access to all of these sites here I just had to verify that install it point it aim it and call it good while the network engineer will come out uh, afterwards and configure all this to their application with hooking it up to the uh, seismic machines and all that good stuff so that was this story here uh, your story could be similar but like I said it could be expanded uh, through an IP connection like I said you, depending on how you use your uh, uh, bandwidth the sky is the limit. You could control switches, uh, cameras, voice, uh, phone operations, all that within this one microwave shot going back and forth. Don't know what this equipment cost. Uh, like I said, I'm not buying this. I'm not going to use this particular technology for my own use unless I'm with a big group or something that has the deep pockets to do this. So, like I said, it's probably impractical for 85% of you guys out there, but, you know, why not show the high-end stuff or the, the, the advanced stuff along with the, you know, everyday mom-and-pop prepper sort of uh, activities, so...